Jim Starkweather, the publisher of Kitmaker Network, and welcome to another episode of Mail Call in a new place, upstairs, in the light, away from the darkness in the, in the basement. Um, well, quite a few things have happened recently. Um, I bought a new microphone for my, my new iPhone, which is the iPhone 11. So this is why we're in beautiful 4K resolution. You can see all my facial imperfections, I'm sure. Uh, and uh, the microphone hopefully will help because that means I don't have to wear that stupid lapel mic anymore and have to do two different things of audio, which should speed up these, the video production of this quite a bit, hopefully. Although the 4K will slow it down, so it may, may kind of be a 50-50 you know, thing. And then uh, this is the third take of this video. <laughs> the first take, I did the unboxings, you know, where I unboxed everything. And I had some phone numbers up on this whiteboard behind me, telephone numbers from, you know, when I, we moved here and so forth. And I was like, oh, crap, I can't have those phone numbers up in that video. So I thought it'd be clever and, like, put up a graphic or something over them. But unfortunately, when I held things up, the graphic would, of course, you know, would, that was up here, roughly, would, like, show up in front of the boxes that I was holding up. And I was like, oh. Okay. All right, I gotta reshoot that video. So I reshot it all and did it the way I'm doing it now. And and I was like, okay, great. Except I forgot to turn on the the battery for the microphone, so I had no sound, zero, not even squeaks or little little itty bitty sound. Anyways, so yeah, that was uh, that was a uh, fail number two. Uh, so this is this is take three, uh, and we're gonna go for take three. Now this is, should be a sped up format. We're going to go with a everything's out of the box format, which I actually, after I did this, I thought, well, you know, I've watched some videos lately, lately from some manufacturers who do this. And of course, there's, I could go back to, well, the fine scale model videos where they, you know, they just talk about the models and they have the, put the photos up and all that stuff. And it's all scripted. Well, you know, I'm not going to be scripted, right? Okay. So yeah, that's, that's not going to happen. But I, but I thought maybe we'll try it this way and see if you guys like it. And if you like it, then maybe I will skip the unboxing portions of the mail call because it's still mail call. All this stuff came in the mail. All right, well, first off, let's start with Zvezda. Zvezda has sent us several uh, kits. They've sent us the, the new uh, K5350 Mustang Russian three-axle vehicle. This is in 135th scale. And I believe it's got some pretty pictures on the back here, too, which show uh, the vehicle uh, with... Uh, actually, I can't see it that way, so I can't do it that way. Uh, <laughs> with a kind of, a, I think, a plastic canvas effect. And it does have 474 parts. It's 22.7 centimeters long. It looks like the kit has some pretty high-end detail, you know, new, new molding st type stuff for Zvezda. So it should be a very, a very nice kit if you're into modern Russian support in army vehicles. As well as, continuing in that tr trend, the Bumerang. That must mean something in Russian, right? Bumerang. It's not a boomerang. Boomerang's spelled differently, isn't it? Is, it? is that how you spell boomerang? I could have sworn you spelled it different differently but maybe I'm not Australian so I don't know these things I've only heard it said I don't spell it a lot anyways uh, <laughs> this is also 135th scale and uh, this is the Russian 8x8 armored personnel carrier let's say it's called boomerang um, although I don't know why you'd want to throw it and have it come back and hit you <laughs> but this one has uh, a small coaxial gun uh, what is it uh, not 762 it's gonna be uh, on here somewhere, right? Um, must be up in the, no, that's the Russian part. It talks about 7.62, but that's obviously larger than 7.62. 30 millimeter, found it. <laughs> 30 millimeter uh, coaxial gun, as well as somewhere there's a 7.62 millimeter on here as well. Um, and then uh, 409 parts in this one with a 24 centimeter length. And again, um, haven't opened it, but this looks like all new Russian or all new Russian, all new, it is all new Russian, all new Russian tooling from our folks, our friends at Zvezda, which is a Russian company, so therefore it is Russian tooling. Right. Uh, unless they farm it out to some other company somewhere else, but I don't think they do. All right, um, anyways, this is a new civil airliner, the civil airliner, Airbus A350-1000, so a a new A350, so that's a new, a new series, right? I, I don't think, it, it was before it was the, 300 and the, oh boy, I'm not up on my Airbuses. Was it 320? Anyways, but I believe this is all new because the decals and markings are just basically the Airbus kit as it was has been released to the public probably in air shows or whenever it was de debuted. Uh, and this is one 144th scale. And uh, no pretty pictures on the back, sadly, but uh, 
on the side it does show the decals that are available so only the one decal set at this point i'm sure more will come out as different airlines buy the buy the the new uh the new airbus so it, it, it it's actually pretty kind of pretty actually I, I think it's a nice looking nice looking aircraft so uh also have some kits here that we still have in from the Vezda that we're looking for homes for so if you're looking for an su-57 in 175th second scale uh, an su-730 sm flanker c the boeing 737 700c for 40d or the petel petelkov petelkov i can't speak uh, PE2 for review, build, blogging purposes to put up content on the website. We would be, you know, grateful if people speak up for those. All right, I'm going to do through the magic of camera work. Now we're going to flip and have new things behind me. Ready? All right, so here we have from our folk, our friends at Panda and Kitty Hawk. We've got the 9K330 Tor air defense system. Sorry. AK little thing. Um, this is obviously a uh, missile slash radar thing, air defense system. I, I, I don't see any missiles on this, but I'm guessing it either coordinates missile fire or it fires missiles somewhere from inside of it. Um, they're not showing anything even on the side box here in terms of offensive armament. So I'm not really too up on this system. I know that the next one does have missiles, but it's also a similar thing. So again, this is a PH. 35008, and uh, it is 135th scale, and includes all sorts of things like, oh, what do we got in here? We've got metal tracks, uh, clear, uh, we've got uh, nice beige plastic with color manuals, uh, at least color on part, part of the manual. Um, quite a few screws here, one, two, three, four, five, six main sprues. Uh, I was looking to see if we had any photo etch, but I don't see any, unless I'm just missing it. But, yep. Quite a bit of cool stuff there. Interesting metal track allocation for this kit. And what else are we going to have? The, uh, this is, this is a mouthful. I've done it. This is the third time I've done it now. The 9A317 Tellar with 9M317 of 9K37M2BUK-M2. Soviets, you really, I'm sure this has a nickname in, in, in Russian, but don't use the nickname. I mean, Telar couldn't have been the nickname, right? Okay, so again, a radar um, SAM system, basically. Uh, I assume these are SAMs, surface air missiles. I knew that much. Uh, 135th scale, 35034. Uh, this one does include some photo etch. Let's take a quick look inside the box. Um, pretty large kit. Very, very large uh, base. And uh, this one also includes metal track lengths. And again, has quite a few screws. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And the photo etch and decals are down at the bottom there. A psalm, they're there. I swear. All right, moving on. In aircraft, we've got the FJ2 Fury. And this is in 148 scale. Of course, this is a early American jet fighter, naval, it looks like, from the fact that it's sitting on a wooden carrier deck. So that tells you the time period, obviously. Um, and uh, this one has a, a few nice, looks looks like markings, all marine markings. U.S. Marines, I, that is. And uh, nice gray plastic with uh, some small figures uh, outside the plane, not, not uh, pilot figures included, but uh, looks like crew or pilot getting in maybe kind of figure. Uh, and then uh, clear for the canopies, of course, and uh, we've got one, two, what, three, three main sprues here with a uh, nice decal and a little bit of photo etch. So that kit is available for review purposes or blogging or anything that we can basically say, yeah, we'll do that. Uh, this one is the Dauphin 2 SA-365N in 148 scale as well. So a civilian uh, or air rescue unit uh, with initially, what, French markings? I didn't know that in one of the videos, but now I know because I looked it up. Uh, for the French markings, I believe some Japanese markings and uh, U.S., I want to say, if I remember correctly, or maybe civilian, some civilian markings as well. So again, um, good-looking kit, gray styrene, very, very full, very, very full box. 
chock full of styrene and, and not even seeing the, uh, the actual air uh, main airframe, I guess you'd say. Uh, it does include some photo etch, uh, of course, with the decals and markings. And what is next from our friends at Kitty Hawk? Well, ugh, it's this gigantically large, in terms of tight, uh, Mirage 2000C in 132nd scale. Uh, looks very, very nice and shiny and uh, very... Uh, lots of fuel. Wow, that is that's that, that baby can fly some distance there with those fuels. Looks like it has mostly French markings uh, with one Greek Hellenic Air Force. Why isn't it the Greek Air Force? Why is it the Hellenic Air Force? And I'm, I'm still kind of a little lost on that one. You know, I haven't opened this package in the prior two ones, but I'm gonna do it this time. I'm gonna do it. This 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 little thing is this thing's getting opened. I'm curious now what's in here. I've been keep saying it. Oh, it's probably 3D printing or something, but. They don't want you to get into the into the, the package, that's for sure. Ah, it's figures. So a nice little, uh, I don't think he's 3D printed, but he looks like he could be, I don't think he's resin either. He could be resin, I suppose, but very nice looking figure there. Pilot seated figure, and then also a nice, well, these are, maybe they are 3D printed, but nice uh, rear exhaust. Uh, not manifold, what is it? Rear exhaust thing. Oh, Ernie, what's it called? Where are you? I need you. <laughs> uh, very large fuselage uh, with, again, a uh, nice box here with additional parts all tucked away here. Clear. Clear parts tucked away in a box. Nice and secure. Not going to get scratched up. Very nice. Modelers appreciate those decal details. Decal, detail. No, although they appreciate decals too. But um, And then uh, wings look really nice just in terms of just... Uh, detail um, in terms of the, the panel lines and such. Um, looks like a couple different nose cone options. So, and lots of underwing armaments and fuel tanks and oh my goodness it just goes on and on and on. There is some photo etch included in this. Very, a small amount but a, a small set of photo etch as well. Alright, so I think we can safely push on to the next manufacturer who has sent us things. Oh, right. Okay, the next one is uh, items from IDG models, and we have the Crusader Mark III in 172nd scale. Um, looks a little toyish in this photo of the kit. It's odd they didn't use an illustration or something a little more, I don't know, uh, generated, but, uh, but obviously 172nd scale is pretty small, and sometimes, depending on your build quality, will potentially look a little toy-like, but I've seen some people build 172nd kits, so I can't tell them from 135th scale they're that, they're that good. And uh, what's this box doing? Go away box. All right, so that one is available, just came out. Uh, we also have the 172nd scale PZL P11A Polish Fighter. It looks like a World War One to World War Two era plane. I mean, they're showing a, a, a dual engine plane in the background here, so I'm guessing these were planes that the Poles were using in the early parts of World War II. Um, very interesting kind of V-wing design there. I don't know if that's what it's called, but and then we have a similar plane. This is the PZL P11 Kobutz Polish fighter, which this one has uh, guns in the wing. I noticed four guns in the wing, whereas this one doesn't really kind of you can't really see what it's got. Maybe it's underwing guns or something. But uh, yeah, they're they're nowhere to be seen. And then we have uh, the 1700 scale HMS Glowworm 1938 British G class destroyer. So this has uh, just come out as well. Let's take a look inside this one because I do like the I do like the ships, and uh, very very small, obviously for a destroyer in one seven hundred scale. But uh, nice nice uh, you know nice simple kit, nothing too complicated. Looks like it has a decent level of detail and such. It does include some photo etch as well as a nice decal sheet with a, a few decals, not a whole lot, but enough to give it the markings it needs and. Uh, yeah, I mean, it looks like if the instructions are indicative of the, the kit quality in terms of the, the detail, it's got uh, quite a bit there. Of course, these are 3D CAD renditions of the ship completed, but you can see they're pretty nice. All right, well, that, that's it from IBG. So what else do we have? Well, we've got um, from MP, Original Master Models, uh, we've got uh, a lot of sets that are... Um, 
related to uh, the Tamiya 148 scale uh, M1A2 kit. So they've got the M1A2 Abrams engine filter. So you can kind of get a closer up look there. Uh, we've got the M1A2 Abrams rear doors and exhaust radiators. And then we've got the M1A2 Abrams battery and starter. And these are all for the 148 scale Tamiya kit. Uh, M1 Abrams driver set. And then we've also lastly got the M1A2 Abrams engine set. So that's the whole engine uh, and some of the upper uh, upper hull bits and where the engine goes in and so forth. And then lastly from them we got an Opal Blitz fire truck conversion set. This is also for Tamiya, a Tamiya 148 scale kit. So if you want to turn your, your Opal truck into a fuel truck, this is available from MP Model Masters. Masters Models. M original MP Original Masters Models. Wouldn't it be OMM? Hmm. You know me and logos and, and company names. I, I definitely get... Uh-oh. Uh Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Bit of clear. What is this for? I'll figure it out later. Because it's probably one of the one of the kits I just opened here. Um, so that's uh, from them. And so if you're if anybody's out there doing uh, or wants to do maybe a build up uh, with with this uh, for review purposes uh, and or blogging that type of thing with, with the Tamiya 148 scale kit, either in the Opal for the Opal uh, Blitz conversion or the M1A2, give us a email ring and maybe we'll. We'll set you up with that. So clearly, we need somebody who can use either some or all of these, because uh, uh, trying to get you know people getting five people to do five reviews on this would be probably rather difficult. Um, at least to to do them in a way that you know we want them. We really want use reviews for for you know, resin conversion kits like this. All right, then we've got from our friends at Ammo a Mick. We've got uh, a this is one item they sent us the one first step set. Uh, this is basically, this would be a great Christmas item. Uh, they probably did send to me right before Christmas, like in, in maybe November, December or something. But um, it does include a bunch of different items that modelers would probably like to have, which uh, includes things like a decal fix and uh, the uh, liquid mask that they sell. The Oh, telephone. This is where I'll have to make a... Okay. Um, the ultra glue. So I'm not familiar with ultra glue, but then when they have just like extra thin cement and decal set, and they have two different putties in here. They have an arming putty acrylic type and an arming putty classic. So I'm not really familiar with these, but for those of you who are, you will know what I'm talking about. And then we have um, some uh, ammo applicators. Now these look pretty cool. They're really small. I'm not sure the camera will get these, but really small plastic applicators with very, very fine little white Kind of balls. I'm not sure what the material they're using are, but it's something basically to grab X amount of, of paint or, or whatever material you're trying to apply and then apply it. So that, that's that's an interesting looking find there. I might, uh, might actually even try to try those out. All right, so MIG figure set. Uh, these are, this is a Panzer Crew and a Panzer German Panzer Crew, and so it has uh, this is a MIG 7024. This is the set number. It includes four milliliters of these uh, 30 mil or 17 milliliter uh, paints. In, in the colors that you would need to do German armor um, crew. And then we have a smart set, Republic of China. This is, again, 17 milliliters in three jars, and it's number 20 in their series. And additionally, we have a Republic of Korea army set. This one's four 17 milliliter jars and number 21. So again, if you're doing projects that involve stuff like this and you're interested in doing a use review, we definitely would be you know fine with you letting us know. Oops. I'll put that back with the tank. All right. Also for MIG, we got in um, some new masking tapes, which I think might be new to their line. So they run, they, they're all 25 meters long and they're on these really large rolls, which is nice so that you can basically not have any hyper curves or, or curled parts and so forth that should come off really easily. And they go from um, uh, 20 millimeters down to 10 down to, I believe, five, six, sorry, six, down to two. So 20, 10, six, two. Uh, now, they might have other ones available, so check their website if you're looking for something different than that. Uh, they might have just sent me a uh, selection of them. Um, and then we had, oh, actually, we had books, too. We've got uh, from 
Um, Mig, we've got this new book called Solution Book 04, How to Paint World War II German Late Armor. Now, this is a fairly small uh, publication, uh, 65 or 70 pages or so. But, you know, the, the quality of these, the the kind of uh, model work that you're getting and the paint work and so forth, you know, they're great to have. And uh, anybody who kind of is familiar with uh, MIG, uh, a lot of these Spanish publishers, they just do, and, and some of the Italians too, they do a great job with their publications uh, and clearly have really good uh, printing printing equipment. This one is uh, How to Paint with Oils, um, Ammo Modeling Guide. And this one is a little uh, bigger. That's a uh, 100 or so, 103 page book. But again, you've got, you know, lots of great uh, projects and various different things by different modelers uh, showing, you know, various, various projects. So looks pretty interesting too. It has lots of different authors uh, and coordination uh, model and sets. Uh, Julio Fonte Diaz, uh, Jorge Porto Dio Coral, uh, Mikhail Perez Biasco, uh, Rodrigo Hernandez Chacon. Uh, so, yeah, they're probably all very well known, and, and I should know them, and I probably have run across them before, but you know, my brain, my memory is not as good as it used to be. Uh, and then we also got from Asian Press, we've got uh, Airplanes in Scale. This is uh, called More Airplanes Are Needed. I think that was a, a poster or something, right? Maybe not. Um, ASEAN Press, a World War One uh, series. This is in English. And again, for if you're into biplanes, this is, you know, just got page after page of, of really cool biplane, biplane paint projects, painting, assembling, detailing, uh, making them the best they can be, and making you go, God, I wish mine looked like this. You know, so, so if you don't mind that, uh, that factor in your modeling and looking at guys who clearly uh, do it great and you're trying to make your stuff better, this, these are kind of things that you probably want to add to your library. And, oh, I forgot a couple of items that AK also sent us. Not AK, excuse me, that makes sense. Um, uh, this is the activator. This comes with a little uh, spray nozzle. So it's a, an activator for the um, Serrano something civilite. It's some kind of uh, process they're doing because this is the same series. This one is um, black uh, slow dry, and this one is just slow dry. So we've got two slow dry um, the materials on it. and again, they're not really up on what the silver. What's it? Hold on a second. I, I'm, I'm, I did this the last couple of times, and I was like, "What the heck?" Because the, they used they used cyanoacrylic, cyanoacrylic, acrylate, cyanoacrylate, acrylate. So it must be some kind of new fancy paint, obviously, that I'm unfamiliar with. But yeah, is this new thing, and this is the activator for it. So I don't know if you need to use this with this. Um, Consult a more knowledgeable paint and whatever person before you try to use said acrylate things. Yeah. Uh, and lastly, we got from Skip Model a, a little uh, SKP model. Sorry, a little lens and tailgate sets for ShotCal LF SKP 276. But you can see it's basically photo etch with uh, some um, various um, uh, lenses and uh, uh, reflectors and things like that. So uh, I think that covers everything I got. It does. All right, so back to the standard portion of our video. If you're unfamiliar with why we do these videos and, and what they're all about, I'll put a little box up here with a link or tell you where to go on our website. And there's a link down below in the description. And you can check that out in another video that I have on basically what these, what these videos are for and why we have them. Um, otherwise, I will do my standard prefaces of we are not a YouTube channel. We, uh, this is not why we're here. We're here to push content to our websites, and that's why we put these samples up so that people will come and review them or blog with them or, or do feature articles and things like that. Think of it like a magazine, you know, that they, they get the same sample kits that we have, and they have to find people to build them. Of course, sometimes they pay these people. We can't pay these people. We can't pay you. I'm sorry. We don't make enough money. We don't make near nearly enough money to pay anyone. We have a hard time just shipping samples out to people. In fact, we ask for usually for shipping reimbursement when we do ship stuff. So in advance of you new people who are asking, yes, sometimes we, we, we go, well, you know, because, you know, we, some people we've been dealing with for years and years and years, and some people are brand new. And believe it or not, occasionally we send things to people, and they don't give us anything back. It's very annoying. Um, but I'm sure that wouldn't happen with you. You would never do that to me, right? Um, all right, sorry. A little moment of, of self, uh, self humor, I guess. Uh, well, I think that covers everything. So if you have any comments, suggestions, questions, please put them below. You can tell me whatever, what, what a strange person you think I am. 
I'm, I'm used to it. 600 videos now on YouTube, and, and I still get the, the funniest comments on a lot of them. Some of them really positive comments. I'd say we still get like 80% positive comments, if not 80, 90% 80, positive comments. But occasionally, there's always that one guy who's got to put something obvious. Anyways. All right, well, take care, and we will see you next time on Mail Call. Thank you.